Vulnerability, thy name is Garen Sprav. Things I never thought I'd say. All we have to fear is fear itself. Obviously, FDR never had to clean his daughter's bedroom. <laughs> well, our next speaker has, and it's terrifying. Working on his visionary communicator pathway, Toastmaster Sean Essler has a message for you with his speech. Fear is real. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> All right, sure. Some fears are completely baseless, right? Remember growing up as a kid when you were little? You were afraid of that monster under the bed. Or maybe it was that big hairy beast hiding out in the closet. So what did you do? You'd lay there, cover yourself up, and pretend it wasn't there. Because we all knew if you can't see it, it can't see you, right? See, now we've grown up, we've gotten older. And especially those of you with teenage kids, those places under the bed and the closet are still terrifying. They really are. Toastmasters and guests, we all have fears. Now, whether that's Garen with vulnerability, or maybe when his daughters start chatting online with a stranger, terrifying. Or maybe Sir Charles Huckabee in the back when he sees those markets crash overnight and the banking industry up in flames. <laughs> Terrifying. Close your eyes for a second. Think about something that strikes anxiety and fear in your heart. Kathleen, what about you? What, what do you fear? Uh, fear of drowning. Fear of drowning. Amy, which one of your fears? Besides speaking, it's running out of gas on a long highway. <laughs> That's specific. <laughs> There's a story there. <laughs> so fear is something we all share. It's something that's in all of us. And for everybody, I'd say, in this room, one of those fears is winding up on her list over there, right? <laughs> Table topics, it's terrifying. Jerry Seinfeld had it right when he said, you know, most of us would rather be back here laying in the casket than standing here giving eulogy. Listen, speaking in front of an audience is absolutely unnerving. And over the course of years, it, it was something that would put me in a corner huddled up in a ball crying. Over recent years, I've been able to narrow it down to two pieces recently. I'll get to that in a second. But I want to give you a little background about me. I'm an IT guy. I fix computers, like this guy. Or like Tim Taylor in the back. I work with small businesses. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've got umpteen different certifications. I helped work on creating some of those tests. Work with the Department of Defense, Department of Energy. Work with small businesses, medium, multinational corporations. And now I get to talk about it. I talk about, you know, cybersecurity and technology with all these business owners, small business owners, specifically. And yet, despite all of that, there's this little voice back here telling me I really don't know what I'm talking about. I get up there and I start talking, no, you're wrong. Or that fear that somebody out there in the audience knows more than me. And they're going to stand up and call me out in front of everybody. It's imposter syndrome. Anybody else have that when they speak? Yeah. All the time. Could be here, could be anywhere, but you get up there and no matter what you do, it's, it's there. It's scratching at the back of your head. You're a fraud. But there's another piece to that. You see, when I speak with small businesses, and recently at a chamber meeting, I gave a talk about compliancy and notifications and data breaches. 
we went through what would happen if you violated HIPAA, which I'm sure everybody's heard of. You know, medical information, personal information, PCI, COPA if you have any information on children. Or maybe it's Sarbanes-Oxley, Graham Lay if you're in the financial industry. You see, there's all these rules and regulations out there that, well, if you lose some data and it gets out there and you don't say anything, you're looking at tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. And no matter how much I talk about it, sometimes, you know, I get this, you know, that deer in headlight stare. <laughs> it happens. But while I was given that, I'm looking out, and in the audience, there's all these small business owners. And there was a point I realized that if this happened to most all of them, they'd all be out of business. They'd lose their livelihoods, their income. People would be put out of work. It would cause financial ruin to these people. So while I'm staying there and that voice is also saying, you don't know what you're talking about, there's another one over here saying, you might be right. So staying up here is terrifying for both of those reasons. I could be right, I could be wrong, but if you're a business owner, if you're somebody that you know, has these security concerns and you don't have that protection in place, if you don't know what to do, pray I'm wrong. Plan that I'm right though. Postmasters. Good job.